Namaste, this is Anamika and welcome to P Gurus. Education and language play pivotal roles in shaping societies, culture, individuals and their sense of identity. It has been a very common grudge of people having nationalistic fervor and who supported BJP that BJP did not do enough on this front of changing the textbooks. Despite Modi government in its third term, we don't know what to expect or to expect anything at all in this term and why that's so important for Bharat. Today, we are diving into this fascinating world of education, language and identity with our guest, Sankrant Sanuji. He's not just an author, he's a myth buster. His book, The English Medium Myth, Dismantling Barriers to India's Growth, flips the script on language and education. And hold your bookmark. Sankranji is also the CEO of Garur Prakashan, a publishing house that champions indigenous narrators because sometimes you need more than just a bestseller. You need a story that danced to its own beats. Namaste, Sankranji. Namaste, namaste. So let's dive straight into the topic. Sankranji, can you please briefly explain to us how the previous rulers, that is British, Congress and leftists, use school textbooks to shape national narratives? If we have to list down sharply five, six points that uh, brainwash Indians with a virus that we have not been able to recover till now, then what would that be? Sure, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the real uh, systematic change in Indian education happens, you know, during the British time, especially after 1857, they made it a real project for social engineering and for changing education. <clears throat> I mean, there's the famous Macaulay Minute, it's been talked about a lot. I don't want to go into it in great detail, but the essential emphasis was that unless the Indians were colonized in the mind, it would be very mm -hmm. difficult to rule them especially after the 1857, what they called the Sepai Mutiny, which we call the First War of Independence, that um, told the British that they really needed to convince the Indians that the British were their saviors and the British were better. And so there was really not much that was present in India and in Indian knowledge. Um, they needed English education, both in language as well as in content, for them to actually progress. So this was something that was systematically instilled by the British into us. And there is the famous history of James Mill that really goes through a lot of detail. Um, now, the funny thing about this is that, you know, we have a book from Garuda recently called The Imperishable Seed, How Hindu Mathematics Changed the World, which actually shows that most of what we study even today in school mathematics, arithmetic, geometry, algebra, trigonometry, a lot of this actually comes from India. But we were told by the British in that first phase that, that uh, in fact, Macaulay says that, you know, uh, all of the books are in of India are not even worth one textbook, you know, in my bookshelf or something like that. So negated all of Indian knowledge, even though a lot of the Western uh, ideas, Western science, Western math had actually been based on Indian knowledge. So that was the first phase. And also we destroyed a lot of the village school infrastructure. There used to be schools all over India that, was at, that were in villages, they were managed by the villagers and attached to temples. And uh, children of all jatis studied in this school. It's a it's misunderstanding and something which is a, a fake news in today's terms that, you know, lower caste did not study and they were kept off from education. All of that is not true. Dharampalji has a big study on education prior to the British arrival or in the early phases of the British arrival before they had erased it. When British themselves have done these surveys showing how many schools were present and how education was down to the grassroots level. In fact, <clears throat> the literary rate in India at that time is likely more than the literary rate in Britain, where education was only meant for the very aristocratic class. So this was the first phase of destruction of Indian education and the textbooks and Books, not only just the textbooks, but the entire structure, how is it controlled, how is it disseminated, all of that got changed. Then, of course, you know, India got independence. Some changes were made after independence, but many of those changes were actually negative. I remember my mother telling me that, that when she was studying in Patiala in Punjab, that, mm -hmm. um, and she was studying in, in one of the top most elite schools of Patiala, and she said there was only one or two sections that were English medium and the rest were either Hindi or Punjabi. 
in in that elite school you know out of 10 or 12 sections and she said that at that time we were taught about a little bit about our traditions even in school we learned a little about the vedas the puranas you know all of this was included as part of the education uh, after independence there was a series of education ministers that had a very ideological stance generally either very leftist um, islamist stance and so and nehru himself didn't really uh, put much faith in hinduism he didn't he thought this all all the indian traditions were backward needed to be fixed and so all of that emphasis got into education where the the education system and the textbooks were teaching india needed to be getting rid of all these ills and how the british came and you know got rid of sati and this and that there used to be this laundry list that children were taught and of course the history was very islamized where you know the moguls became like the most prominent part of history and so many of the other dynasties the people in the south in the northeast the cholas chalukyas northeast kingdom so many the homes so many of these were marginalized in our history telling you know and and so there was this one narrative that dominated now this used to be a very big issue this was one of the issues that bjp had raised and it was a big issue for the bjp itself and so one of the first works that when uh, murli manohar joshi is there and bjp comes to power 99 2000 that era one of the big projects there was to change the textbooks and murli manohar joshi's team created a series of textbooks then they put those new textbooks and of course there was a big hue and cry in the media about saffronization saffronization of education is happening even though what was really happening was removing the extreme left bias that was actually against the indian tradition was against the indian civilization that was that was the bias that was carried in those textbooks but even that was i would say to a milder degree than what happened later 2004 when the upa comes to power one of the things they do in the first few months is to set up a textbook committee and this textbook committee had a lot of far left people they had people like tista sitalwad involved who was one of the people who wrote that fake uh, concerned citizen reports around the gujarat riot she had been paid through congress many times later on she was even implicated in court for falsifying witnesses those kinds of people were the people who were given charge of textbook now imagine if these people are willing to falsify uh, testimony in court of events that just happened how much more willing were they to distort earlier history so the entire a lot of the history textbooks and neeraj atri has this book which documents a lot of this uh, distortion if you look for neeraj atri on garudabooks.com you can find his book there and so he's documented so many distortions that came came from sort of mildly i would say the pre bjp era uh, uh, congress textbooks were mildly anti hindu and mostly colonial in flavor whereas the post bjp era after 2004 upa and within a mo- few months of uh, coming to power they set up a committee and with the, in less than 2 years they had put a whole new series of textbooks even when they didn't even have a have a full majority even though they were in a in a coalition much weaker position than bjp was in each of its terms in 2014 2019 or even 2024 they were they were weaker yet they changed all of the textbooks and and they were very very slanted they were became literally christo islamist textbooks they were telling you how great they have chapters on how great islam is how great christianity is they have chapters on jesus christ like absolutely religious indoctrination is there in those textbooks and almost every place wherever you find any criticism of religion that's that's exclusively targeting hinduism and and no other religion so these are the textbooks that our children are studying now and hmm. there's a famous statement by one of the education ministers in the bjp government which who after almost a decade said that we are proud that they haven't changed a single line or a single word in any of the textbooks of the upa era so this is the kind of short summary yes as you said that but then modi came in bjp it was a modi was marketed as a strong man and he himself has been a victim of decision paralysis on this front and as you mentioned about prakash javdekar 
it was a black pill moment for many of us when he said that we did not even change a single comma or a single paragraph and did not change anything in last four years. So my question is ki why changing textbooks is a Lakshman Rekha which BJPs do not want to cross? No, it's not a question of Lakshman Rekha. I think from the point of view of the BJP, I think my feeling is that Modi ji, for better or worse, and I think some of it is actually very valid, has been very, very focused on economic progress for India. And mm. I think he believes quite rightly that if India rises economically, many of these other problems will get sorted out, right? For instance, um, one of the, I think, successes of, of the Modi government has been that Pakistan has completely fallen off the radar, fallen off the map in terms of engagement with Pakistan, as well as economically. And in all other ways, Pakistan has been falling apart, whereas India has strengthened uh, day to day in terms of its economic performance. So I think the BJP, especially Modi's view, I don't know if it's all of the BJP, but Modi's view has been to focus on the economy, to focus on infrastructure, to focus on ports, focus on, you know, all of the things that are needed to get the economy going. And I think when some minister says that they haven't changed a, a comma, it's because he has been instructed not to change a comma. So it's not because Modiji wanted him to change it. He probably didn't want to change it. And he probably mm -hmm. didn't want to change it because I don't think he wanted to become distracted by the controversies that would come on changing the textbooks. Um, and he wanted to focus on the economic agenda. So my personal view is that that, that is misplaced, you know, because the BJP and Modi will get attacked no matter what they do. If they change, don't change textbooks, they'll get attacked. If they change textbooks, they'll still get attacked. So to think there will be any special, I mean, so many powers tried all they could to defeat Modi, including external foreign, foreign powers to defeat uh, BJP and Modi in the 2024 election. So my view is that I, you know, people will criticize no matter what. So you might as well do what you're supposed to do, you know, rather than worrying about how, how you'll get criticized for it. Uh, so definitely, I think these textbooks could have been changed much earlier. I, in fact, wrote about it as early as 2016, saying that not much has been done. I wrote in Swarajya at that time that not much has been done for by BJP for civilizational issues. But I think this is where they have really missed a beat, I think. And especially because when you have young children indoctrinated in that ideology, which is very left, very toxic ideology, which is in current UPA era textbooks, they are not going to become BJP voters. And many of them in the last 10 years have become uh, adults and have become voters. So uh, it's not something which either serves the BJP or it serves the constituency uh, that elected BJP um, or really the, the Indian nation as a whole. Yes, absolutely. It defeats commonsensical logic that despite having mandate for straight 10 years and all the constituency backing this up, still BJP did not pursue with this do they don't have the intellectual prowess or do they don't have the vision for this? It, but anybody would fail to understand. Yeah. Well, I think it's not as if they, you know, I'm sure they can find enough people if they were deliberate about it. I'm sure they, there are enough smart people all over India that are actually inclined towards Indic ideas, inclined to have a positive view of Indian history and have done a lot of research and good work. So I don't think it is simply the lack of intellectuals, but I think it's BJP itself has been kind of, you know, not focused on the intellectual. So they can, they can find the people, obviously they can find the people, but it's just not been part of their agenda. And, you know, my tweet was saying, you know, you cannot really be a Vishwa Guru till you are leading the world intellectually. There are so many ideas can come from the Indian traditions that, that are beneficial to all of the world. So you have an opportunity to read the world intellectually. But um, if you don't invest in that, invest in your own narrative, in your own history telling. In fact, I think China has done a much better job at it. When I was in China, when I was in a museum, I think there was some exhibit on zinc plating. And they said the West claims this was discovered in such and such year. But of course, China knew this 300 years before that. So everywhere you find in their books, in their discourse, in their internal discourse, uh, in, their, in their public discourse, they are constantly questioning Western narratives on history, of science, and all of that. Whereas in India, we have almost unthinkingly adopted Western narratives. That's why I was mentioning this book, The Imperishable Seed by Bhaskar Kamble, which Garuda 
Prakashan published, which shows that almost all of the mathematics that we study came from India. And hmm. uh, most of modern science is not possible without that mathematics, without the decimal system, without multiplication and division done algorithmically like you do now. You can't do that using Roman numerals. So a lot of the mathematics and the foundations for science came from India. So uh, rather than tell that story, rather than own that story, all we tell children is that you are backward and you're socially backward and you needed to be fixed and all your society is full of problems, you know, and, and you needed all these saviors to come from outside to fix it. I think that's very debilitating. Children don't grow up with confidence about their society and culture. Um, and of course, language is a big issue as well. That's what my book is about, the English medium myth. In Hindi, it's called Angrezi Madhyam Ka Brahmjal, where I went to over 50 countries to study language use. And I found pretty much all the countries that are developed and of a reasonable size, they are all using their own mother tongue for education, for higher education. Uh, I'll, sure. Sukhaji, I'll come to that in a while. I want to understand that Congress and all these leftists kept the entire generations away from the real historians like uh, R.C. Majumdar, Jadunath Sarkar. But today, the likes of uh, Sai Deepak, Vikram Sampath are writing the history that we should have read. So I want to ask what kind of multiplier effect government can give when they already have so much of huge audience and lot of visibility. Yeah, so multiplier effect, I mean, it's not a question of multiplier effect. The main, the basic foundation is that NCRT textbooks are hugely influential in the country. Not only are they used in CBSC, uh, which is all across the country, a lot of the elite schools are either CB, are, are CBSC. Plus, hmm. many of the state boards either directly use them or refer to them. So the NCRT textbooks really inform a whole generation of students across India. So to not mm -hmm. fix those those textbooks is completely criminal. I mean, I know there have been some fixes and people are saying now slowly, slowly, they're doing it incrementally without making having anybody make a fuss. But why are we afraid of people making a fuss? This is the thing I don't understand. People are going to make, people are going to attack the BJP anyways. People are going to do all the attacks that, that they would do whether or not they change textbooks, right? So rather than being so diffident and so worried about, oh, what will somebody say? They should just go ahead and do the changes that are necessary. But again, um, that go slow policy is what has been communicated to NCERT through the Department of Education and all of that. And not really much work has been done. On it. As you were mentioning that these textbooks have a huge impact on national identity and a historical understanding. But I want to ask... In today's world, when we all have exposure to so much of mass media, how important and how burning of a concern this is right now? Because like uh, kids are glued to screen so much of the time. Are we more influenced by what they are seeing on uh, internet and consuming information through TV and other media rather than textbooks? Well, I think, in fact, textbooks are even more important today because of the fact that children are getting uh, glued to their screens and on social media, all of the things, the only books they read often are the textbooks because they're, they're required to read them, right? Hmm. So if somebody is in eighth grade, in ninth grade, 10th, 11th, the, the only books they might be reading is their school textbooks because that they have to use those to pass the exams, right? Hmm. So, and also textbooks and teachers have an authority, right? Even if their parents tell them something, oftentimes they'll say, no, 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 teacher told us this, right? Hmm. So the, the students are more likely to believe what their textbooks and, and teachers are saying versus the outside information. So what happens is when the textbooks are so flawed and so faulty and so against the Indian traditions, then the parents have to work two to three times as hard and everybody else has to become so much more active because the children are simply getting indoctrination into a point of view which is extremely toxic. So there has to be a lot more effort on the outside to fix that. So uh, absolutely textbooks are very meaningful because whether or not they're reading other books is, is irrelevant. Textbooks they will have to read. All the contemporary boiling issues that India is facing right now about religion, caste, divide between uh, within the Sanatan fold. The seeds of all these conflicts were laid down on those textbooks only, like through Dravidianism, uh, North-South divide, inclusion of Maxiki concept. So I sometimes wonder, had those things not been included in textbooks, India would not have been grappling with 
all this religion and caste issues definitely i think definitely textbooks have shaped uh, are a big part of the sh- shaping the narrative of india as a backward caste ridden divided society and at least the in fact as i said the upa era textbooks went way beyond and much more toxic than even earlier congress textbooks because earlier congress mm-hmm. textbooks even though they might have been you know not pro hindu things and might still be talking about some social ills but they did not come with this extreme breaking india separatist agenda and this extra religious supremacist agenda to highlight islam and christianity as a religion which the upa textbooks explicitly do uh, they explicitly say these are good religions and hinduism is a bad religion can you imagine a secular country which teaches uh, certain religions are good and the religion of the majority of the people are is, is bad unless there's an agenda of conversion of that majority so this is what the textbooks of the upa era do they, they repeatedly and constantly attack hinduism um, and you know neeraj atri as i said a document in that so obviously and the dravidian identity all of those all of the breaking india identities those are being made worse by this kind of slant that is in the textbooks and and fixing those textbooks you know in my mind was one of the topmost priorities that needed to be done from year 1 of the modi government in 2014 not as to have this discussion in 2024 10 years later we're still not very much as sanjay playing the devil's advocate there is a common argument in government's favor that it took more than 100 years for britishers to change the hindu mindset according to their ideology it took leftist 60 years so bjp is also taking its time well it didn't take murli manohar joshi that much time they were able to do it in a couple of years a few years and it didn't take up a very much time uh, it, even hmm. though they wrote a whole new set of textbook that were even much worse than what the british had done so it it took them uh, less than 2 years to to implement those so uh, neither did the previous bjp under vajpayee ji take that much time nor did uh, the upa that came with a much smaller majority than what bjp got um uh, you know much smaller uh, number of seats they didn't even have a majority and bjp had an absolute majority for 10 years straight and mm. to say that it it would require time is is just not an excuse that works you know in fact the supporters of the bjp have been saying right from you know when i started criticizing this in 2016 they were saying mm. no no time lagta hai it will take time it will take time it will happen for sure you just see 2019 as soon as it comes it will happen no first they say it takes time takes time 2016 is like 2017 it will happen 2018 it will happen then no, no next time next time is the priority is going to happen right five more years past of the next term also so if you have an intent it doesn't take time if you have no intent it's not going to happen in 20 years right so it's all about focus and intent and priority so coming to your book of english medium myth you have written extensively about that in india english has been a medium of uh, economic growth and social mobility for many of us and as i understand it your advocacy is not about doing away with the english language but it's about using mother tongue as a medium of instruction am i right so i want to ask what steps can our policy makers take to strengthen mother tongue education while acknowledging the importance of english as a global language see the problem is not whether english is important or not the problem is that we are forcing 80% more than 80% 90% of india that does not know english to mm-hmm. only learn english as a way to rise as i said I, i did an extensive study of many countries all around the world and all the countries that are developed have developed on the basis of instruction in their own language of education in their own language you know you can look at all the east asian economies called the asian tigers you know look at japan look at south korea look at look at uh, china now um, look at uh, the entire taiwan all of these countries they they are doing education in their own own mother tongue right and they are doing the highest level you can become a neurosurgeon in japan do a phd and japan has so many nobel prizes in science where they are doing all their phds in japanese right Hmm. so firstly it's a bit of a myth about english being a global language it's not a global language in the sense that everybody around the world is learning in english medium only about 5% of the people of the world have english as their first language hmm. and only about 5% more know english overall it's not something that uh, is known all across the world 
and all of the countries that are doing cutting edge technology cutting edge work science uh, physics all of these countries uh, medicine are studying in their own mother tongue in in france people are studying in france to the in french to the highest level you know in poland they are studying in polish in russia they are studying in russian right they are not studying in english so the first and biggest problem is when you change to english medium learning english is great learning english does open opportunity but when you switch the medium to english what that does is that suddenly you, you know imagine now there are schools in rural india because of state policy when i say state policy india has created a system where you can only study in in english when you go to the higher education levels especially in professional courses all of the iits are in english only all of the medical colleges aims is in english only even ayurveda colleges are in english only. you know hmm. the even though the, the the original texts are all in sanskrit but still they are in english medium right your your mba colleges are all in english so what you tell students is that you have no opportunity uh, to go into higher and professional education unless you study in english now imagine and because of that because of this government policy english is now going down uh, into the elementary level into the primary level into the village level now imagine mm-hmm. a child in a village who has who, do, who doesn't have an environment of english who doesn't speak english at home who, who doesn't sing english songs who doesn't have any uh, people in the village that are talking to him in english suddenly mm-hmm. she goes into school and the instruction the medium of instruction is english she is not going to school mm-hmm. to learn english she has been taught math and science in english when she doesn't know english right like, can you imagine how about uh, tomorrow say all of these english elite that say oh this is great let them learn in english medium how about if they switch all the schools to chinese medium will will they be happy if their if their children go to chinese medium tomorrow when they don't speak any chinese they don't know a word of chinese they can't read the students textbook in chinese they can't guide their homework in chinese but the students are studying in chinese medium all across india what will happen right it will be madness mm-hmm. and then it's like that it's for the village children it's like chinese they're going there they don't understand a word of what's being said and the the, the teachers barely speak english but still mm-hmm. we are saying we have to teach the english medium and mm-hmm. the result of this is you know i have interviewed students from some of these schools for my company for jobs and i remember there was a girl uh, studying near kanpur and she she had studied for 10 years in english medium i told mm-hmm. her to write a letter in response to a question that has come a hypothetical question for a customer she could not even write one sentence of english after studying for 10 years in english medium so these children we are completely ruining them they can neither understand any subject because they are being taught in english nor you even speak english or use english right so we are completely ruining an entire generation of students by forcing english medium and that english medium is being forced people say oh it's because parents want it no parents want it because that is the only career option you have left from government policy right it's government that says no no you can only study in iit in english it's government that says you can only become a doctor in english that's the policy that is forcing parents to say no my child has to study in english medium if you can tell me in brief why is english language so glamorized and how is this myth perpetrated that english is a global language so you need to learn it yeah so that is part of the colonization of the indian mind right hmm. it's it's the only people who say every the world is speaking english people say oh the world is using english are people who haven't seen the world you know hmm. because they they are actually living in this little little pond of english speaking indians and at most their dream is to go to america which also speaks english and therefore that's the world for them how much have mm-hmm. they actually traveled in the world right because mm-hmm. if you actually go and travel in the world you will find that the world is not speaking english even in europe mm-hmm. once you you know so many people are not comfortable with english you know you'll go to a small german town they won't speak english you know mm-hmm. even in a big german city yeah, some of them will speak english to get along yes there is some english as a second language but a lot of people are not fluent in english right mm. uh, and and they are not expected to be fluent in english why should they be, mm. why should a polish guy and a czech guy or a, or you know a, a german guy or a french guy or a, a guy from spain be expected to be fluent in english it's not their language they can do all mm. their studies all their mathematics all their science all their uh, their phd's in engineering and and uh, physics and chemistry and biology and and medicine they can do all of that in their own languages so uh, till now we you have detailed about the problems of our textbook and uh, correcting the history and second medium of instruction 
mother tongue as a medium of instruction so tomorrow if you get a meeting with education minister what concrete suggestions would you like to give to him you mean overall in education or in or in this yes, issue of medium yes for these things correcting the textbooks plus uh, mother tongue as a medium of instruction well i think the the simple philosophy and policy that should be followed by the government of india is that no child will be left behind because of language which is that mm-hmm. education should be available to the highest level to every child in india in their mother tongue or at least in all the constitutionally recognized languages official mm-hmm. languages of the constitution so all of the official languages not just hindi and english but in kannada in tamil in bengali in marathi all of these languages education should be available up to the highest level let the child choose it's the gov- government business of the government to create the facility where the child can study engineering in all these languages study medicine study management you buy a tv today in india if you read a product manual you will find that the tv will have japanese and it will have chinese and it will have european languages it will have english but it won't have a single indian language in the product mm-hmm. manual you know mm-hmm. very small countries will be represented but you will not find a single indian language because we have not made any policy many other countries they have policies on this in china they were you know walmart a big multinational company was fined because they were selling a product where the label of the on the bottle was uh, in english and chinese but the characters of chinese were slightly smaller than english and so they fined them how can they, how is this possible you cannot make chinese smaller than english and in india you don't find any indian language at all we are fine well, you know oh, thank you for giving us a product uh, however what uh, you will find in fact i was in in bangalore and i was finding uh, you go into a store you are finding these plastic things other things which has chinese characters on them but there was no indian mm-hmm. language there was chinese characters only no english also aren't we at a irreversible stage because even uh, myself belonging to a middle middle class family even i would find it difficult to read any uh, indian language i would find it more convenient to read the script at least the script should be roman or the language should be english no not at all i mean the you know still as i said a very small percentage of india is actually fluent in english right Hmm. and as far as script goes again you are asking for suggestion a very simple suggestion children should be taught computers and forget computers the children should be taught how to use the mobile phone in their own language in school why hmm. are they not taught in why why have you have all these thousands of uh, government schools all over india why is it uh, using the mobile phone in their own language one of the lessons that they get with when they are in third grade or fifth grade or whenever they start using mobile phones right people don't even know how to switch it hmm. to use to use the indian languages in the mobile phone right so uh, when i was in china you i could see like even the gps everything the taxi driver everything all their gps everything was running in in chinese when i went to an apple store to look at their iphones none of the sales people could speak a word of english all their phones display was in chinese hmm. right so all of this has to be taught through the system right now we have a system that constantly forces english that constantly makes english superior that constantly makes everybody say you know go into this english path of course that's what children are also doing but if hmm. if we change the system it's not that difficult to do you you make sure that children are taught to type in in their uh, local language in hindi or kannada tamil what have you they, they should be taught to type in school in their own language hmm. i know a girl who was doing a ma in hindi and she still don't know how to type in hindi she hmm. she even in ma level she was not using the uh, hindi keyboard uh, on the computer all countries have their own keyboards we don't even require a hindi keyboard you know in a, in our or whatever language keyboard so hmm. it is all a matter of just clear policy you make a policy everything is going to fall into place but for that you hmm. need to have a vision right and for for that vision you need to think through this topic in an in, in a fashion which has studied the world right and you don't hmm. if you and here you are not changing a, a line of a textbook how are you going to change the whole system any more suggestions on history path change of textbooks no i think i think it's good for for one talk and a um, lot of i mean education reform in education can easily be a one hour uh, talk by itself so maybe so, we'll get into it some other time sure sure we'll definitely have a discussion on that okay sankar ji thanks so much so that's a wrap on the show thank you everybody Thank you.